Hello, my dear viewer, and welcome to my bedroom. Today, we're going to talk about lolitas. The term lolita is defined by Merriam-Webster as a precociously seductive girl. So the definition of a lolita might seem shocking because it involves young girls being seductive. Moreover, in the common knowledge and culture, lolitas seduce older men, but men who are adults, while they, the girls, are not. Let's deep dive into the history of lolitas and lolicons and find out about the not so angelic pretty side of it. In Japan, there was already an interest in the cute culture, the cuteness culture, with an emphasis on handwriting and childish acting. In the 1970s, a movement appeared in Japan, the Otome Kei. Otome means maiden, uh, or young lady in Japanese. It draws inspiration from the 50s clothing style, and everywhere I looked, the Otome Kei fashion is said to give the wearer a feeling of cuteness and femininity. But this appeal of young girls isn't new at all in Japan. The sexualization of young girls is quite common, for example, in anime and manga. And actually, it comes partly from the Western culture. It seems like a full circle. More on this a little bit later. Because the novels often target audiences like young boys or young teens, all the fan service is made so that the fetishes are met. Of course, teenage boys are naturally sexual, but it's not really necessary to portray girls who look like they're 10 years old in a sexual manner, no matter how old you are. What's even weirder is that most of the time, it's middle-aged men who design the anime and who write the story. But you know for a fact that it's not only teenage boys who watch food wars or who listen to young Japanese music girl groups. Because yes, Japanese music records often encourage young girls under 18, 12 years old, up to 18 years old, to audition uh, for their label in the objective to form girl groups. And yes, what you are seeing here is right. A bunch of photographers are going out of their way to snap a panty shot of this girl this young star. You know what's worse? The target audience isn't even young girls. No, it's these middle-aged men. <laughs> these men are hoping to attend one of their shows in hope to hold their hand or take a picture with them uh, or even talk to them. Some people even refer to this as child prostitution. Let's now see how it spread around the world and how it landed in Western culture. Now, obviously, Western culture was very receptive of this trend because we're quite used to the sexualization of young pop stars. Do you remember the music video Baby One More Time in which Britney Spears is 17? She's dancing in the middle of her school hallway with her shirt open and you can clearly see her bra hanging out every time she jumps up and down. In many other art pieces, women are reduced to the status of children. Like, for example, like Jodie Foster in Taxi Driver. Why do you want me to go back to my parents? I mean, they hate me. Why do you think I split in the first place? There ain't nothing there. Yeah, but you can't live like this. It's a hell. Or Natalie Portman in Garden State. <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> <laughs> got any suggestions? Uh, what? You got any suggestions? Yeah, kick his balls. Well, Natalie Portman in Leon the Professional is quite the opposite, but still as bad. <laughs> like a virgin. Happy birthday, Mr. President. She is a young girl who seduces Leon. Leon. A grown man. <laughs> the schoolgirl outfit deserves a whole video on its own, but for that I will redirect you to Mila Lee's video called Let's Talk About the Japanese Schoolgirl. It's a very, very educative video and it's very well made. So go check it out if you're interested in that. In Leon the Professional, Natalie Portman is 11 years old when she auditions and she turns 12 on the set. Natalie Portman has held a speech in which she talks about how she was a victim of sexual terrorism. 
I was so excited at 13 when the film was released and my work and my art would have a human response. I excitedly opened my first fan mail to read a rape fantasy that a man had written me. You know what? A little fun fact. Natalie Portman was actually supposed to play in the movie Lolita in the remake of Vladimir Nabokov's masterpiece in 1997, three years after Leon came out. She was so afraid of the things that had been said to her that she refused the role. And she said that she started to avoid taking roles that could be sexualized. Thank God she refused Lolita because it would have been a bloodbath. But while we're talking about this wonderful movie, let's talk about the actress that plays in the movie Lolita, Dominique Swain. She was 17 when the movie was recorded. Surprised much? In the earliest movie version of Lolita, which came out in 1962, Sue Lyon was 14. Why do you think Billie Eilish felt like she needed to cover herself up entirely up until the moment that she turned 18? For child stars like Selena Gomez, Natalie Portman, Billie Eilish, the Olsen twins, Emma Watson, Miranda Cosgrove, Lindsay Lohan, some people actually kept a countdown to know exactly the moment that they would turn 18 and that it would be okay to sexualize them. Let's look at now how nowadays the term Lolita is just used for women who are attracted or attracting older men. In the book Lolita in the Afterlife, Jenny Minton Quigley classifies women like Britney Spears, Laura Palmer, and Dolores Hayes as Lolitas. She says if they were all in a room by themselves, they could express the freedom to speak dark truth out loud. To confess what grown men have said and done to you, that sometimes you love it and sometimes you hate it, but no matter what, you can't imagine your life without it and the thought of turning 18 makes you so sad. Because what good is a girl if she's no longer young? The author identifies to the nymphes, which is a synonym for lolitas. She basically says that the community is a place for her to find herself and find people who have experienced the same things as her. She was a part of a website on which she could chat with older men and she says if they got too creepy, they would get banned. And too creepy was defined as child pornography. <laughs> but regardless, she doesn't think they ever banned anyone because they didn't want to be shut down. These men had PhDs, they were doctors, businessmen, CEOs, and the author claims the girls loved that. Jenny, the author, was speaking with a man who claimed he liked his neighbor's 14-year-old daughter a lot. The author, who was 20 at the time, didn't believe him. The man figured out where she went to college, her home address, her phone number, etc, etc. But he was also chatting with other young girls, and the website was a niche to find them. He knew a lot about the girls he was talking to, and she says it was not because he was an expert stalker, but because the girls really put all of their information on the internet, for people to find easily. Let's move on to the second part, how the movement itself thrives on the not-so-ethical taboo. In the common culture, we love to see movies and stories and series about lolitas. In my favorite manga, GTO, or Great Teacher Onizuka, which came out in 1997, there is a great part of the story which is axed around the fact that the main character, Onizuka, becomes a teacher because the students are hot. <laughs> Let me just tell you, in case you've never seen the anime or read the manga, that he teaches 14-year-olds. You often get flashed penny shots or bra shots or anything of that sort in the anime and the manga. And yet, it's my favorite manga. Why? Because besides the fact that the story is the most realistic and the greatest one I've ever read, well, the fact that it's very unusual and that it hints to lolitas and that stuff that you don't often hear about, it makes it even more interesting and it makes you want to keep reading. The fact that men are indeed attracted to younger girls isn't talked about that much. So when you actually find a story that talks about it, you just want to hear it. The book Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, written in 1954 and the many remakes it has known, is a great example of this. 
The book has indeed inspired two movies, which we talked about earlier. One came out in 1962 and the other one in 1997. Seven years later, he finished it and tried to publish it, but it was rejected by American publishers because it was deemed pornographic. It was finally published in Paris by the Olympia Press. After a rash of glowing press reviews, it was eventually published in the United States. First of all, whatever is censored attracts the attention of the audience. People want to see what's forbidden, and the fact that it was censored and then published says a lot about it too. Society eventually became accepting of the sexualization of young girls, to the point where instead of being considered pornography, it was deemed the only convincing love story of our century by Vanity Fair. But the proof that it was remastered twice also proves just how much people love to see it. Many other stories like Wild Thing Wow. <laughs> Looks brand new. Mr. Lombardo, we're running kind of late. How about if Nicole goes on to the Mansons? You could give me a ride when you find the ticket. For American Beauty. also tackled the subject of Lolita's always with a very sad or dark twist. We love to see how these relationships between an older man and a younger girl never leads to anything positive. Either the law ends up being involved or somebody dies, or both. So yeah. We love to see the chaos it creates, but also the fact that it's forbidden makes it more mysterious. Let's talk about a more recent example. Recently, the movie Mila, or Baby Teeth, came out. It talks about a 16-year-old um, Australian girl who is in love with a 23-year-old drug addict. She gets cancer, which threatens to kill her before she even has the time to I'm gonna try not to spoil this for you, but basically at the beginning of this of their relationship, Mila is very lenient and patient towards Moses, who, as we know, is a drug addict. Despite this, Moses eventually ends up abandoning Mila on a rooftop. Mila gets angry, her parents too, but Moses somehow ends up coming back into the family. Mila's health gets worse, she has sex for the first time with Moses and dies the very same night. Now, you can make out a lot of symbolism from this very last sentence, but I'm not a psychiatrist and I didn't write the story, so I'm not gonna try to, for example, tell you that Mila died because it was so traumatic that she couldn't handle it, because it could very well just be the fact that she died because she was finally ready and felt like she could finally go, because she had done everything that she needed to do. Regardless, it's still weird. However, the movie, while it did not mark a perfect score amongst the critics, did pretty well. And that's especially because, I quote, it works precisely well because it refuses to accommodate expectation, according to the Houston Chronicle. So yeah, in conclusion, we thrive on the forbidden.
first we can definitely see a lot of Lolita everywhere. Think Twitch and OnlyFans, for example. A very common theme for girls is to dress up as a maid or a schoolgirl or a cat girl. So obviously there's a clientele for this type of content and it doesn't even seem to be older men who are attracted to it anymore. It's kind of everybody. <laughs> This joins the tendency that women have to call their partner daddy or father or master. <laughs> Although it's considered a kink or fetish, you can't deny that there's something somewhat disturbing about it. Wanting to be dictated everything, submissive and obedient, and all the while looking and acting innocent by wearing short skirts and knee-high socks is bizarre. Women are thriving for a throwback in their teenage years and girls are yearning to appeal to older men. Moreover, men love to have a younger girl be submissive because it feels like they have power over them. Moreover, it's a young girl. Because yes, men are statistically, it's a fact, more attracted by young girls. No matter their age, they're always attracted to women who are in their 20s. Women, on the other side, are always more or less attracted to people their own age. If a man is with a woman who is his own age, let's say, and she starts dressing up as a younger girl, that would explain a lot, the fact that men are very much into that sort of sexual roleplay. You get a woman who is legal and your age, but who dresses up and looks like the ones you're attracted to, the ones that are 20 years old. The sexual child play seems like the perfect combination for all those people. Now let's see how there is a difference between the male view and the female view of Lolita's. In the movie, the story was told from the perspective of Humbert Humbert, a pedophile, a rapist, a child abuser, a predator. Of course, in his mind, it was Lolita who seduced him with her wet clothing and the flowers in her hair and her bare feet and her sundress. It was Lolita who manipulated him into having sex and used him to get money and gifts. It is Lolita being so cold-hearted and so ungrateful who had left him for someone else and had the audacity to ask for money three years later. The fact that Lolita is tricking, tricking Humbert Humbert makes a sort of resentment grow in men in the media. This leads to Lolita's being portrayed the wrong way in the media. The mainstream media is a male-dominated domain. They naturally, unfortunately, take offense to the fact that Lolita's can take advantage of them. This leads to them talking negatively about Lolita's and their articles and men are often portrayed as the victims even in the movies. Unfortunately, not only are Lolitas being depicted under the male gaze as sex symbols, but they are also depicted like the villains. However, on the other side, we have stories like Feng Se, Qi De, Chu Lian, Le Yuan, or The First Love Paradise of Feng Se Qi, in which the Lolita is the one who tells the story. It's a very painful read because the author tells the story very authentically. Indeed, uh, she tells the story of when she was sexually abused as a child by her mentor. I am referencing this piece of art because the two female protagonists are the same age. In the movie Lolita, she's 14, and in this story, uh, Feng Se Qi was 13. Then the Chinese Lolita had to present her uh, tutor, her mentor, to her friends as her loved one because she genuinely felt that way. She believed that's what love was. She was trying to make sense of all the pain and the suffering that she endured. Both Lalitas were trying to initiate a relationship with the pedophile as a way to defend themselves against the men who had entered their lives figuratively and literally when they never should have. This is the author Lin Yi Han. She tried to report her abuser as an adult when she felt that she was ready, but unfortunately she never had enough proof to arrest him and moreover, she had introduced him as her boyfriend, which made the matter even more complicated. For the sad part, she eventually ended up committing suicide and her abuser still continues to teach young kids today. According to Lolitas themselves, the trend was made for women to empower women and just take a trip down memory lane. But when we see all of the history that we've talked about before, we realize that it might not really be how it's actually executed. Finally, let's talk about the mindset of Lolitas and why it's still pretty strange. So we've said it a couple times already, Lolitas is about women remembering their younger days. You still think that's pretty weird, right? 
because wanting to be a child when you're an adult is not something very common. Actually, it's called the Peter Pan syndrome. The Peter Pan syndrome is a term used to describe an adult who is socially immature and people who are not willing to grow up. In fact, there is an enforcement of the Peter Pan syndrome on women nowadays. The infantilization of women is precisely what is happening. I recommend you watch another very good video by Madison Brown um, entitled You're not sexually liberated, you're 16. She really tackles accurately the fact that young girls nowadays are attracted to sex work and exposing their body while being underage. And it's a phenomenon that's being normalized. Yay! Girls will grow up and keep this attitude that they developed while they were still very young. They, as women, will keep on trying to remain very young. Moreover, women who haven't been necessarily growing up with the uh, sex work normalization and still teenage girls nowadays are trying to keep up with the tons and tons of megabytes of porn that are out there and that um, features freshly out of childhood girls and role play. It perpetuates the Peter Pan syndrome onto female adults. In conclusion, the dichotomy is strong between women who want to remain young girls and young girls who want to become adults as fast as possible. I wouldn't know how to explain this, but it's a very interesting topic, uh, which we're in the midst of. The female kind is changing and revolting, and this might be proof of it. No one feels at their place yet because we are still so affected by the patriarchy and the markets and the possibility to generate an income or attractiveness in this domain. So this might have to come with time. By the way, listen to Lolita by Lana Del Rey, it's a good song. And I didn't mention this article which is titled Time's Finally Up for Hollywood's Lolita Complex. Thank you so much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something because I learned a hell of a lot of things and it was super freaking interesting. Like I never knew that there was so much hiding under the Lolita and, and like the history behind it, but just also the social way that it's being portrayed on us and like in stories and movies it's just so freaking interesting so if you enjoyed well i recommend that you maybe inform yourself a little bit more than just with my video because it's still my video it's still my research i singled out some uh, elements that i thought were interesting but i left out so many others so if you like to hear more about this topic uh, do look at the videos that i mentioned uh, do look at the creators also because they're very much knowledgeable about that topic in this domain uh yeah just leave a like if you did tell me in the comments what you thought of it and i will see you in the next video goodbye my little cherry